What is up all you individuals out there? It's me, full-time anime man. And before I get started with this what if, I would just like to say that all images are owned by their prospective owners. So please support the official whatever it is you say so that you don't get copyrighted. Uh, dumbest thing I ever said. But yeah, uh, nothing else. Let's just go ahead and get into this what if. Enjoy. Both the boys start walking towards the entrance of the building until they heard a familiar voice coming from behind them. I thought I told you to not show up. Both the boys turn around to see Bakugo approaching and stop within six feet of both of them. Izuku and Denki stare Bakugo down, but Izuku takes Denki by his shoulder and says, come on. Let's just go and don't pay him any attention. Denki and Izuku turn around and walk as Bakugo yells out, Hey, don't ignore me. The boys keep walking and then Bakugo follows them while saying, I told you to not show up. Bakugo then touched Denki on his shoulder. Denki then pushed Bakugo back a few feet away he landed on his backside. He was surprised of how strong Denki was, but at the same time was perturbed. He humiliated him in front of other people. He gets up while letting off some explosions from his hands and was about to attack, but then he was grabbed by his arm by UA security. Bakugo turned to look to the guard. He was taken off of how big he was. The guard spoke. I saw what you did. Don't go around assaulting people again, otherwise I will see to it myself that you will not be partaking in the UA entrance exams. Do you understand me? Bakugo doesn't say anything, but the guard speaks again. Do you understand? Bakugo speaks with an attitude in his voice. Yes. Okay then, now get going. With each step Bakugo took, it would get more heavier and heavier. Izuku and Denki were inside the UA building, making their way to the written exams, but not before Izuku telling Denki that he was proud of him. Denki smiles. Some time goes by, and the boys did a good job on the written exams. The mock exams came, and Denki and Izuku were assigned a card of which city they will be placed in. Izuku was placed in City A, while Denki was placed in City G. So, they will be far from each other. Izuku speaks. I see. So, they're doing this so that kids from the same school can help each other rake up points. Denki then says, yeah. I see that actually being a thing. Their talking was interrupted by a boy with blue hair yelling, You two, keep it down. Some of us are trying to listen. Another person spoke. You be quiet. You're the one who's being loud. Yeah, yeah, shut up. The blue-headed boy then sat down with a look of embarrassment on his face. Izuku and Denki then let out a small chuckle. Present Mike speaks. All right now, everybody remain quiet. Now, I'm going to explain how you're going to rack up points. Everyone quiets down and present Mike explains that they will be destroying robots. There will be robots ranked up from one to three and there will be a zero pointer that they need to avoid at all times. So good luck everybody. And remember to go plus ultra. Everyone gets out of their seats and heads to their designated cities. But before Izuku and Denki separate... Plus Ultra! Well, bro, it's truly time. Denki then says, Yeah, I gotta be honest, I'm a little nervous. Well, don't be, said Izuku. We've worked hard for this moment. It's time to go beyond. Uh... What's that thing that All Might always says? Hmm... Denki smiles, and so does Izuku, and together, they say at the same time, PLUS ULTRA! 
Good luck out there, Robes, said Denki. Break a leg. Oops. Sorry, said Izuku. Denki then reached out with his right hand and said, I'll see you when it's all over. Izuku takes his right hand with his right hand and, sh and they shake each other's hands. Whew, a lot of hands there. All of a sudden, a small colored bolt of electricity emitted from Denki's hand and passed on to Izuku. Izuku was met with a small shock. It was unusual. Wow, whoa, 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 said Izuku. What was that? What do you mean, asked Denki. You gave me a little, you gave me a little shock there, but uh, it's good. You should, you should save your energy. <laughs> wait, wait, you're, you're unlimited. You're, you're unlimited. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm freaking good. Uh, <laughs> Izuku was feeling more energetic than usual. Denki was concerned for his brother and said, "Bro, are you okay?" Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm great. I'm fine. I'm, I'm fanat. I'm, it, 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 I'm ready. I'm ready to kick some robot butt. So let's go. Izuku runs to the changing room to change into his other clothing. And so does Denki. But he felt like something was wrong. But he thought if Izuku was okay, then that's all that mattered. A few minutes later, Izuku was waiting for the doors to open. He does his stretches and jumps all over the place. In City G, Denki was thinking about Izuku, saying, Man... Izuku was overflowing with excitement. I'm kind of worried about him. I hope he's fine. Back over at City A, some someone noticed Izuku and said, Whoa there, man. You look ready for anything. Izuku then says, Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm pumped. I can't wait to kick some robot ass. When is this door going to open? Present Mike speaks over the intercom, saying, are you all ready? Izuku then said out, out loud, Yes! Open the door! That's the enthusiasm I like, said President Mike. The doors open, and Izuku shimmies through the cracks of the doors. Ida speaks, Wait, where is he going? Mike says, There's no countdowns in a real battle, now run! They all run, and Izuku finds a robot and destroys it by shooting it with electricity, making it melt or overload. Running around some more, Izuku finds a two-pointer and thought to himself, Man, I wonder how hard I can hit. Let's find out! Izuku charges at the robot and punches it with his bare hands, knocking off its armor plates covering its body. Izuku, after a few hits, the robot was destroyed, and Izuku's knuckles were bloody. He looks down and saw them and said, Oh wow, I can't even feel this. I'm like a cartoon character. Who's next? Over at CG, Denki is destroying robots by electrocuting them, blasting at them, or using one for all to destroy them. Oh man, this is so cool. I'll bet I can make more points than Izuku. Hiya! Back at City A, Izuku was having a little too much fun. Oh man, I bet I can make more points than Denki. What the? Izuku then heard the sound of a girl's voice talking from behind him. Um, excuse me. Are you okay? Izuku turns around to see Ochako Uraraka. With a worried look on her face, Izuku speaks. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, fine, fine. Why? Well, it's just your knuckles. They're, they look really bad. Izuku looks to his hands, and she was right. Izuku was doing more harm to himself than he was supposed to be doing to the robots. He speaks. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry about that. I guess I just lost myself. Wait, I got an idea! Izuku then got on all four and changes into a wolf and says, I'm going to use my teeth and tear them apart. 
Thanks, girly. Uraraka was taken off by what had just happened. A boy just turned into a wolf in front of her and left his clothes behind? Right in front of her? Izuku then began to chomp at some robots, mainly going for their throats, ripping them to shreds. Izuku saw a robot on wheels coming right at him and said, Pikachu, I choose you! He opens his mouth and conjures a ball of electricity and shoots it at the robot, causing it to explode. Izuku then zoomed around, using the most dangerous part of his quirk, if he wasn't careful. As, he, as he's running, he says, Where's the robots? 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 All of a sudden, Izuku was met with a great headache that snapped him out of his psycho state. Wolfie Izuku limps and nearly falls over while saying, Whoa, what's going on? What is this sensation? Oh, my paws! Izuku then looked down to his paws and saw that they were really messed up. But he was still able to walk. Oh man, I'm hot. I'm burning up. I need to sit down, but the sunlight, it just makes me even more hotter. But there are some clouds coming over to block out the sunlight. For now, I need to find shelter. In some shade, Izuku then limped his way into a building, making his way up some stairs. He pants harder with every passing second. Izuku finds a comfortable spot and lays down as he tries to relax. He spoke to himself. What's going on? This adrenaline rush, it can't be anything medical, or at least I don't feel like it is. I just need to relax. Breathe in, breathe out. Just keep doing that, Izuku. Just keep doing that. As Izuku tries to remain calm, Denki was still fighting robots until he came across a girl with purple hair and earphones attached to her ears, being outnumbered by six different robots. They were all the same. I don't know what I'm talking about. Denki knew this girl couldn't take on all the robots by herself, but he decided to wait and see what she does because just in case she could fight all these robots by herself, he doesn't take her points. The robots just stand there, waiting for the purple-headed girl to make the first draw, like a western showdown. Ten seconds have passed, and one of the robots charge at the girl. She dodges, driving one of her ear jacks into the robot, vibrating it at a high frequency into pieces. Two other robots charge at the girl at the same time. She barely managed to dodge by jumping in between the two robots. While she was in the air, she then drove both of her ear jacks into the robots, destroying them. Denki was impressed of what he was seeing, saying, wow, She's got some good agility. But oh man, she looks tired. Maybe it's time for me to step in. The last three robots attacked the girl. All she could do was dodge. She couldn't see an opportunity to fight back. And with that, Denki stepped in. He charged up full cowling and runs in to help the girl. He jumps into the air and kicks one of the robots, destroying it. The girl sees this and says, Hey, thanks for the help. No problem, said Denki. You look like you could use a hand. After a few seconds, Denki and the girl had defeated the remaining robots. Eh, it seems all clear here, said the girl. Okay, I think we got them all, said Denki. Yeah, it looks like they did. 
While they were celebrating, out of nowhere, a three-pointer robot popped from a building, leaving it in ruins, charging at the girl. Danky instinctively moved, using one for all in his legs, but by accident, he uses 100% of one for all. Charging his right arm up, he punches the robot and was successful in destroying it, but it left him horrible, in horrible condition. Both his legs and his right arm were broken. He was badly damaged. Oh my god! Said the purple-headed girl. Thanks for saving me, but what the hell just happened to your arms and legs, dude? Denki speaks while he grunts from the pain. It's... It's okay. I just need to see recovery, woman. Okay, okay. Said the purple-headed girl. I just need to... The girl tries to move Denki, but his grunts made it impossible. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Denki speaks, saying, It's okay, just stay calm, and... Unfortunately, they were interrupted by an army of robots running towards them. Oh no. Said the girl. They're coming. Oh no, what am I gonna do? The girl looks down to Denki and says, It's gonna be okay. I'm gonna cause a diversion. Looking to the building, she drives her ear jacks into the wall and vibrates them, making part of the building fall apart, dividing them from the robots. Okay, that should buy us some time. I'm gonna pick you up. Denki then said, Okay, but if things get out of hand, just leave me. That's not going to happen, said the purple-headed girl. Now come on. She picks Denki up by his shoulder, Wrapping, you know, doing the old thing where he, where you know, like they, they take the arm of the person they're trying to help by wrapping one arm around their neck and having them walk alongside them. That kind of helping him. Back to Izuku, he still feels the odd sensation and the pain in his paws. Oh, what is wrong with me? All of a sudden, everything started to shake. What, what was that? Was that an earthquake? Before he could say another word, the same building that Izuku took shelter in was being destroyed by a giant robot driving its hand through the roof of the building. Izuku uses his speed to quickly evacuate from the building. Izuku looks up in bewilderment as he saw a giant robot labeled Zero on its chest. The Zero Pointer looked down to Izuku. Izuku runs for a few seconds and he realizes that he's okay. His, he's not feeling hot. His headache stopped. Although his paws were still bothering him, he was okay in other parts. But the thing that really got Izuku's attention was that he was using both quirts at the same time while running, and he wasn't having a heart attack. After getting a few feet away from the zero pointer, Izuku stood up and said, Okay, there is clearly something wrong. In the middle of thinking, his wolf ears heard the sound of a familiar voice. Uraka is screaming for help. He turns his head in the direction where he heard her screams. He looks and sees that she was trapped underneath some rubble. Izuku saw that everyone was running, leaving her behind, and to make things even worse, the Zero Pointer was about to run her over. Izuku speaks to himself. It's a hero's job to help anyone in need, but what can I do as a wolf? Maybe I could shoot a focus beam at him and aim for the head. There's no time for thinking. I need to take action right now. Izuku starts running at the Zero Pointer, and as he charges up for an attack, he opens his mouth and conjures a ball of electricity and concentrates. And with the momentum in his legs, Izuku then jumped into the air. And as Izuku gets closer and closer to the Zero Pointer, his body was covered in a bright light of electricity. He closes his eyes and then 
when he came in contact with the Zero Pointer, Izuku then phased into the robot like a phantom. We fade to black, and then we reappear. We get a vision of what appears to be a long tunnel. There was a light just a few feet away, and when it gets closer and closer, Izuku then opens his eyes. Oh, oh, what the heck just happened? Why am I so high up? And what happened to the zero pointer? And what's going on with my voice? Izuku looks down and saw Uraka still trapped underneath the rubble. She had a face of bewilderment. Izuku speaks. Oh no, you're stuck underneath all that. Here, let me help you get that off. Izuku then reached down with his right arm to help Uraka. But when he saw his arm, he realized that it was the arm of a machine. Izuku quickly raised his hand up to his face while saying, What? He then looked to his other arm and said, What the hell is going on? What is this? He then felt his face and realized that he can't feel anything. He then looked down to the rest of his body and he realized that he is possessing the Zero Pointer robot. Oh my god, I'm possessing the robot? How? What does this mean? What do I do? Can I become a person again? Back to Denki, him and the girl are still running. But Denki couldn't quite move well on his own. The girl speaks. Man, this place is like a freaking war zone. When she said that, it caught the attention of some robots. It comes in for an attack. The girl puts Denki down and attacks the robots, destroying them. There was only two, by the way. But all that did was cause more ruckus and the attention of other robots. It was too much for the girl to handle on her own. All of a sudden, the ground started to shake rapidly. All the robots that were coming towards the two then retreated, running away from the danger. The two teenagers were unaware of that moment. What was that? asked Denki. All of a sudden, a giant zero-pointer robot emerged out of nowhere. The Zero Pointer looks down to the teenagers and, s and saw them. It tried to reach out with its right arm to attack. The girl backs up in fear towards Denki. Denki notices the trouble that they are in and says, somebody please help us. Denki raises his left good hand into the air Back to Izuku, being as gentle as he can, he picks off the rebel that was on Uraraka with his robot arms, which was like little pebbles to him. As he says, are you okay? Are you hurt? Uraraka looks up in disbelief and says, No, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. But how did you do that? Izuku looks down to his hands that were now the robot hands, and says, I don't know. This has never happened before. I don't even know what to do. All of a sudden, Izuku saw a light in the distance. Looking towards it, he notices that that was Denki's lightning. Izuku knew what that meant and said, Denki. Izuku looked down to his legs which were wheels like off of a tank. Okay, I gotta go. Izuku looked to Uraraka and said, Can you please stand back? I'm gonna try to move. Okay, but be careful, said Uraraka. Izuku then reverses. Whoa! Okay, that's to go back. He then moves forward and says, And that's to go forward. Okay, it's like driving a car. Just gotta be careful and head in that direction. Here goes nothing. Izuku then moved forward in full force. 
about to hit the wall of City B, but Izuku busted through it by bashing it down with his robot arms. And soon, he was in City B. Everyone in City B saw him as a threat and ran away, so nobody got hurt. But while in City B, Izuku saw another zero-pointer chasing other students. Izuku decided to help them and destroys the robot by smashing into it and fighting him with his, bare, with his hands. I almost said bare hands, but he's a robot. Students were surprised seeing a robot fight happening right in front of them. With hardly breaking a sweat, <laughs> get it? Izuku was victorious and he proceeded to City G where Denki was. He then proceeded forward and busted down the walls of City B, then C, then D, then E, then F, and finally City G. Izuku looked over and saw the zero pointer. It was a it was reaching down with its right hand about to attack Denki and the girl. The girl and Denki thinks that it's all over. But then, Izuku attacked while saying, STAY AWAY FROM MY BROTHER! Izuku intercepts the robot by ramming into it, causing it to tilt over onto its side, unable to get up. Izuku started beating down on the robot over and over again until the robot was destroyed completely. Both Danki and Earphone Girl were amazed of what they were seeing. This was phenomenal to them. Soon, Izuku destroyed the Zero Pointer and turned his attention to Danki, who was laying on the ground. Both of them, not knowing that it's Izuku, closed their eyes. That was until Izuku spoke. Denki? Are you okay? Denki looks up to this robot out of confusion and says, How does this thing know my name? And how is it talking compared to the other robots that we fought? Denki speaks. How do you know my name? It's me, Izuku. Said Izuku and the robot. What? Yeah, it's crazy to believe. But it's actually me. I'm possessing this robot somehow. And what happened to your legs, bro? Well, let's just say I overdid it. Earphone Girl was confused of what was going on. This boy and the robot were having a conversation. She finally spoke up. Just what the hell is going on here? Denki speaks. Oh, sorry to be so rude. Um... What was your name? Jiro. Oh, that's a nice name. Well, Jiro, this is my brother, Izuku. Izuku, this is Jiro. Izuku waves while still in the giant robot, saying, Hi. And somehow he manages to possess this robot. And that's about all I got so far, said Denki. Izuku speaks. Oh man, we need to get you to Recovery Woman fast. Jiro speaks. Yeah, but how are you going to help us get there as a giant robot? Izuku puts a hand down to the ground and says, Here, hop on. I'll carry you guys there. Jiro looks down to Denki, unsure of what to do or say at this point. Then Denki speaks. I think we should listen to him. He can get us there faster. Okay. Said Jiro. Jiro helps Denki up onto Robot Izuku's hand. <laughs> and Izuku carries them away. Izuku takes both of them to the main entrance of City G. Izuku puts them down as everyone was bewildered of what this, they were seeing, a zero-pointer that they were supposed to be avoiding because President Mike said that it was dangerous helping someone. 
Jiro then helped Denki onto the gurney bots to be taken to her covered woman's office. Wait, Izuku, what about you? said Denki. I don't know, said Izuku. I'm gonna have to find a way how to get out of this body. But right now, don't worry about me. You go to recovery, woman, and get recovered. Okay, said Denki. But be careful. And don't go around destroying any more robots, okay? Alright, let's get going. The gurney bots take Denki away, and Izuka was left alone. Well, not completely alone. The mock tests were still going on. Izuku looked over and saw Jiro just staring at him. What's up? said Izuku. Jiro speaks. I'm sorry, it's just... Today's been weird as hell. Some dude breaks his limbs after... what I assume was using his quirk. I saw a robot fight between two giant zero-pointers. And the guy whose limbs were broken has a brother who came in and saved both of us and carried us to the front of the mock exams. Yeah, definitely a weird day. Izuku says, yeah, it's been weird for me too. It's not every day that you find out you have a new power from running into a robot while being a wolf and saving a girl who was stuck under some rubble. Jiro speaks. Wait, did you just say wolf? Yeah, said Izuku. You're telling me you have two quirks? That's right. I'm done. I, I, I am just so done. Jiro starts walking away, but then Izuku stops her, saying, Hey, what about the mock test? Jiro turned around and said, Um, I think I racked up enough points to pass. I need to go get changed and cleaned up. Izuku then said, Well, you do that. I gotta find a way to get out of this body. <sighs> Jiro sighs and says, well, aren't, aren't we in an anime right now? So shouldn't that mean that all you have to do is just believe in yourself and focus, that kind of stuff? Izuku was confused, saying, what did you just say? Never mind, said Jiro. Just focus on what you want, and maybe that'll help. Izuku speaks. I don't know what you're talking about, but I guess I'll give it a try. Izuku focuses, and soon the robot that Izuku was once possessing started spazzing around, like it was getting shocked. And soon its body was covered with electricity. Jiro sees this and slowly backs up. The robot was spazzing out with more and more aggressiveness, and then it stops. The robot's head was looking down to the ground, and it was standing there as if it was powered off. Jiro then spots a piece of thread of electricity surfing around this robot. It comes to the ground, and Izuku retakes his wolf form. Wow, said Jiro. Izuku tries to walk, but his legs felt weak. But soon, after a few stretches, he was able to walk again. Jiro approaches Wolf Izuku and says, Hey, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Hang on. There's a clothing store just over there. I'm going to go get some clothes and change back. After a few seconds in the store, Izuku changed back into a man and put some clothes on. Izuku emerges from the store while wearing clothes. Jiro sees him in his true form. Wow, so you're Denki's brother? I gotta say, you guys have similar features. Are you guys twins? 
No, said Izuku. We were supposed to be, but our mom had problems giving birth to me. So I was a delayed baby about a month after him. Oh, well, that's rough. Is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. Great, but one more thing. Why is your hair green, but Danky's is yellow? Ash Jiro. Hmm, I don't know. All of a sudden, their talking was interrupted by the sound of hydraulic press and metal grinding against each other. They both turned to see the robot that Izuku was possessing powering on once again. The clouds blocked out the, the light of the sun as the sound of thunder ran in. Oh crap, not again. And said Jiro. The zero pointer looked down to Izuku and Jiro. Izuku readied himself for a fight, but then blue electricity started covering his hands. Izuku notices what this means, and he knows exactly what to do. Izuku steps forward in front of Jiro. What are you doing? We need to run. run said Jiro. No, said Izuku. I'm going to beat this thing. But how? That thing is a hundred times bigger than you. Izuku then turns his head around to look to Jiro and says, The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Izuku then activated his quirk in his arms at its fullest and doesn't even realize that his electricity is the colors of all the rainbows. The giant robot reaches down. Izuku then batters his arm back as he says, Watch closely, Jiro. I call this the Fist of God. Izuku then swings his arm downwards and in doing so, it causes a sort of shock wave that makes a deep crater underneath him and Jiro. Whoa, what the hell is that? Said Jiro. All of a sudden, the clouds that were above started swirling as if a tornado was coming. The lightning that was in the clouds started gathering in the center of the swirl. And what happened next? Izuku didn't even see coming. For lightning did emerge from the clouds, coming down, but it was huge, and it took the shape of a fist. Izuku was flabbergasted about this and said, Oh my god, that's bigger than what I wanted it to be. Izuku then picked up Jiro, and she says, Hey, what are you doing? We need to run. Izuku started running and jumping from rooftop to rooftop. So basically, he's a hidden leaf ninja. Anyway, they managed to get a great distance from the zero pointer. The lightning fist came bashing down on the zero pointer, smashing it and overcharging it, as well as melting it. Now, everyone kept their distance from the zero-pointer, so luckily nobody was hurt. When the dust cleared, all that was left of the zero-pointer was its rotisserie gears of its legs. Everyone sees this, and someone said, Holy crap, was that God? I don't know, but that was awesome! Everyone started cheering, and soon President Mike says, Time's up! I hope everyone had a great time today, and if you haven't raked up any points, well, that's just too bad. Good luck next year. Jiro and Izuku lock eyes, and after a few seconds, Jiro speaks. Just, who are you? Izuku smiles and says, I'm Izuku Kaminari. All of a sudden, Izuku felt pain in his right arm. Ouch, said Izuku. What's the matter? Asked Jiro. My arm, it hurts. Well, here, let me see it. Jiro looks at Izuku's right arm and sees that it has sprained. Oh, crap. Now you get hurt when you use your quirk? How 
many quirks do you have? Only two, but don't worry. It only hurts a little bit. I just need to see recovery, woman. Izuku gets up and starts walking towards the exit. Jiro assists him, and while they were walking, Izuku says, Hey, Jiro, thanks for looking after my brother. Jiro blushes and says, No problem. Izuku notices this and says, What's wrong? Why are you blushing? It's nothing, stupid. Izuku chuckles, and soon they reach Recovery Woman's nurse, nurse office. Denki was just about healed and being tired after the process. It, Denki sees Izuku and says, Izuku, you got out of the robot. That's good, but what happened to your arm? Hey, bro. Man, do I have a story to tell you. About some time goes by, both of the boys were healed, and Izuku told Denki about his encounterment with the Zero Pointer. They were both leaving UA, and Denki was bewildered of what he was hearing. Wait, so you used that move again? Where you called down the lightning and it was bigger than last time? Yeah, and it took the shape of my fist. Can you believe that? And I don't know why, but for some reason, when I swung my fist down, it made a crater underneath us, as if a meteor had struck that spot. Wow, that's crazy, said Denki. Yeah, and to make things weirder, look at this. Izuku raises his right arm into the air and conjures lightning on his hand, but it kept changing color. Denki was in much disbelief, and Izuku said, This is weird, right? Denki then raises his arm into the air and said, and did the same thing, and said, Not really. You can do that too? Denki then says, Bro, that started when I got one for all. It upgraded my quirk, and it just so happens that I overused my quirk at 100%, and then you used your quirk, and you hurt your arm. And your most powerful move was even more powerful this time. Izuku thinks for a second and says, wait, wait, wait a minute. Are you saying that I have one for all? Denki nods his head and Izuku says, no way. It can't be. I never swallowed your DNA and people who say no to the quirk can't get the quirk. So how is this possible? I don't know, said Denki. We need to get in contact with Toshinori. But for now, it's probably best if you don't use one for all. Yeah, you're right. But why did my arm break when, when you used it, you broke your bones. So why did I sprain my arm? Hmm. It's probably because you have more muscle mass than me. And it's only, and it only messed up your arm a little bit. Good point, said Izuku. Well, I'm tired, said Denki. Let's go home. A few days have passed. Denki and Izuku haven't heard anything from Toshinori nor Gran Torino. But in those passing times, both the boys have been practicing their uses of one for all. While outside, Denki couldn't help but notice that Izuku was using both of his quirks at the same time, but without showing any signs of, his, of a heart attack. Once Izuku is done running, once Izuku is done running around the block more than like a hundred times, Denki speaks. Bro, how is it that you're not having a heart attack right now? Usually after a few seconds, you'd be on the ground right now. 
Like, don't get me wrong, I'm glad you're okay, but how? Izuku gets in his clothes and changes back into a human and says, I don't know, maybe it has something to do with One for All. I still don't understand how I got it, and you still have yours. All Might did say there can only be one, right? Denki then says, yeah, so what could it be? While they were thinking, both of the boys heard their dad calling them from inside the house, saying, boys, each of y'all got a letter from UA. Both the boys then looked to each other and said at the same time, race inside the house. Both of them start running and each of them took their letter to the living room. Izuku then says, okay, bro, you go first. He opens it and reveals a small holographic projector. What is this? Their dad enters the room and says, that's a holographic projector. You say power on and it turns on. Oh, okay. Thanks, Dad, said Denki. Denki sits the projector down and says, power on. It activated and revealed All Might on the projector. Both the boys say at the same time, All Might? The boys listen closely. Congratulations, Elder Kaminari. Your score was a whopping 86 villain points. Denki and Izuku high-five, but they're interrupted by All Might, saying, But wait, there are more points. When you ran in to save that girl, you have earned another point known as Rescue Points. And so, for your score, plus 50, your score was 136 points. Congratulations, Elder Kaminari. Let me be the first to welcome you to your hero academia where I will be teaching. Good luck. The projection ends, and Father speaks. That's my boy. I'm so proud of you. Great job. Thanks, Dad. Izuku, open yours next, said Denki. Okay. Izuku opens his and, and says, Power on. It activated with All Might on the screen. But this time, he was sitting down while resting his elbows on the desk with his fingers locked together, with a look of distress on his face. All Might speaks. Hello there, young Kaminari. Izuku and Denki felt the regret and despair in All Might's voice, and their looks of excitement soon turned to sadness. All Might speaks. I regret to inform you that you will not be partaking in UA High. Izuku gasps, wanting to know why they aren't allowing him in to UA. All Might continues, The reason why you are not enrolling is because... <sighs> you broke the rules. And more importantly, you put people's lives in danger. Allow me to show you. The video changes to a clip of Izuku destroying the walls of cities and him running over other pointer robots. All Might speaks. Right there. You have taken other people's chances of earning points, and because of your actions, people ran away from you, and they did not earn anything. The clip continues to play. It shows Izuku nearly running over Katsuki Bakugo, who had to use an explosion to get out of the way. All Might speaks. You almost ran over another person. If, you'd ha if that person hadn't moved, you would have ended his life. Izuku was bewildered of what he is seeing. He didn't even remember running over anyone. All my continues, and for the last one, I personally think that this is the dumbest rule. You stole someone else's chance of earning rescue points. All Might shows a clip of Izuku carrying his brother and Jiro to the exit of the mock battle. That girl was about to get rescue points for helping her brother. 
but you took that opportunity from her. Izuku starts dripping with tears. Both Denki and Father see the distressed look on his face, but All Might continues. I'm sorry, young Kaminari, but your request to join UA has been denied. Izuku breaks down crying, falling to his knees. Denki and Father run over to comfort him. Denki speaks. Hey, it's... It's, it's gonna be okay, Izuku. I... I... Izuku... Izuku's crying makes Denki cry. And they hug. Izuku speaks. Oh, pff, 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 try again. Father speaks. It's gonna be okay, boys. I'm gonna call this school in the morning and we're gonna get things straightened out. It's gonna be alright. But then, All Might speaks once again. Young Kaminari. Although it may be hard to take all this in, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. You see, we have shared your results with other schools, and there's one school in particular that will be more than happy to have you. But for now, here are a list of other schools that would like you to attend in their high schools. A list of schools appear on the screen. It reads Shiketsu High, Ketsubutsu Academy High. Sorry if I'm saying the names wrong. Saiyai Academy, Asamu Academy High, and Seijin High School. When the list reaches its end, All Might appears on the screen again, saying, for the school that wants you, it's Shiketsu High. It's Japan's second most recommended schools. Once again, I'm sorry, young Kaminari, but I do believe you have a very big chance of becoming a hero. After all, it's the heart that makes the hero. It's not, it's not the quirk, it's not the schools, it's not even the people that calls you a hero. It is within you, and you have a very big heart than I can imagine. All Might puts his signature smile back on and says, Good luck, young Kaminari. The video ends, and the projection powers off. Izuku continues to sob. A few hours have passed. Izuku went to his room alone. He lays down in his bed. Small tears came falling down his face as his pillow absorbs the salt water. Soon, Izuku heard knocking at his door with his mother's voice on the other side. Son, are you okay? Son? When he opens it, he says, not really, in a depressed tone. Mother can feel the depression in her son's voice and was on the verge of crying herself, but she fought back the tears and said, Listen, Izuku, I know you're upset, but you can't let something like this jeopardize your future. I saw the list of the other schools that want you, and Shiketsu High is considered the second most greatest school. Izuku looks down to the ground, but his mother gently puts a hand underneath his chin and lifts him up and says, it's going to be okay, son. I know you can pull through this. Maybe, and just maybe, if you prove to UA just how great you are, they just might allow you into their school. You just need to work a little harder and prove it not only to them, but to yourself. Izuku understands what his mom's saying. He shakes his head and nods in agreement and hugs his mom. Back on the bed, Izuku's phone starts ringing. Hey, mom, thanks for the talk, but I gotta take this call. Okay, son. Thanks for listening. Izuku smiles and closes the door. He picks up the phone and reads the caller ID, saying, 
Toshinori with an image of All Might underneath. He answers it, saying, Hello? Toshinori speaks. Hello, young Kaminari. I'm sorry to call you at such late hours, but I read your message and you said you had something urgent you need to talk about? Yeah, actually, it's... Izuku was interrupted by Toshinori saying, I'm sorry, young Kaminari. I really did try my best to convince them to let you in, but they said that you were just too reckless. But I know you just found out about that ability. It was just an unforeseen set of circumstances. If you had known that you could do that, I am 100% sure you would have done it differently. And you knew your brother was in danger and rushed over to save him. And the rescue points you stole, believe me, I thought that was the stupidest reason ever not to let you in. I just want you to know, I'm sorry. It's silent for a few seconds, but then Izuku speaks. It's okay, All Might. It's just like you said. It's the heart that makes the hero, not the school. From the other side of the phone, Toshinori takes a breath of relief. Izuku continues. But anyway, we got something big on our hands. Well, what? what's up, said Toshinori. Izuku tells All Might about him having won for all, and when he's done, Toshidori is flabbergasted about what he just heard. Wow, that's incredible. Meet me at the beach tomorrow at 10 a.m. Bring your brother with you. Izuku said, okay, and then he hangs up the phone. Izuku then ran out of his room to find Denki, he ran across his parents in the kitchen and, and asked, Hey, Mom, Dad, where's Denki? They both responded, saying, Outside on the porch. He then made his way outside and saw his brother sitting, looking down in the dumps. Izuku approaches his brother with, with news, but when he called his name, he didn't respond. Hey, bro, what's the matter? A few seconds of silence goes by, and Denki speaks. I'm sorry, Izuku. Izuku was confused, saying, What? What are you sorry for? Denki speaks. I mean, I'm sorry that I jeopardized your chances of getting into UA. Jeopardize? What do you mean? I mean, if I hadn't used 100% of one for all, then that wouldn't have happened. If I hadn't broken myself for some girl, this wouldn't have happened. You'd be in UA with me. I don't know what I was expecting by the end of it. If that girl would even like me. If I'd had a chance of getting her into bed. It's because of those thoughts. I was, I was the way I was. I'm sorry. I'm the worst brother in the world. Izuku was not sure what to say. Denki thinks him getting hurt for a girl was the reason he didn't get in. What a numbskull. Izuku takes a deep breath and says, Bro, you shouldn't lie to yourself. Denki looks towards Izuku. You didn't break yourself to get the girl. You broke yourself because you really were worried for her well-being. Your body moved on its own, like a hero should. You wouldn't have lost control of one for all like that if it wasn't. Your junk wasn't doing the talking for you, man. Your spirit protected those who couldn't protect themselves. And if it wasn't for you sending that message in the air, you'd be even more hurt or worse. I don't regret what I did, because you were not just a hero to that girl. You were a hero to everyone in CG. Denki rubs the tears off of his face and hugs Izuku. Thanks, bro, said Denki. 
No, thank you, said Izuku. After a few minutes of hugging, Denki says, So, oh, what's up? What did you want to talk about? I got in contact with Toshinori. He wants us to meet him in the beach tomorrow. Hopefully he can explain how I got one for all. All right, said Denki. Uh, hopefully he can help us. Yeah. You know, it's getting late. You should probably head inside and get some rest. All right, said Denki. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Denki went inside. Izuku was left alone with his thoughts. Man, if I can't go to UA, which one should I go for? I mean, I was really looking forward to going there, but they won't have me. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that, that Seiya Academy is a, an all-girls school. Do they really want me that much that they're willing to break the rules, allowing a boy into their sanctuary? While he was thinking, the front door opened to father. He says, oh, hey, dad, what's up? Hey, son, do you think that we can talk for a moment? Yeah, sure. What you got on your mind? This is a conversation that we get back to later in the story. A few hours passed. The boys were at the beach and sees Toshinori and runs towards him. Oh, hey boys. How's it going? Izuku rubs the back of his head and says, well, last night was a real downer, but it's okay. Denki speaks. Yeah. I'm fine, too. <laughs> Toshinori then gives the boys a sympathetic smile and says, Young Kaminari, you said you have one for all? Can you show me? Izuku takes a deep breath and uses his quirk. Electricity visibly flows through his body. Toshinori sees one for all in Izuku, and, and then Denki uses one for all as well. Toshinori speaks. I've never seen anything like this before. Izuku even explains that he can use both quirks without any drawbacks. Like, I can run for a long time and not have a heart attack. Hmm. That's really interesting. And when I and when I used God Fist, it was way stronger than before. But after I used it, I hurt my arm. It may have something to do with the fact that you have one for all, said Toshinori. You see, one for all takes energy of its current wielder, depending on how much percentage you use. So, considering the fact that you never run out of energy and it's always needing a charge on your power source, so when you run, you use one for all. And when you run, you overcharge your bodies. One for all is taking the energy when you're running in your wolf form. So, one for all takes the energy you make so fast that it keeps you from having this heart attack. That's my best guess. Izuku speaks. Yeah, that makes just about as much sense than what I was thinking of. <laughs> yeah, said Denki. But what about the robot position? Do you think that was one for all? Well, considering your reaction to when you first did it, you didn't know you could do that. No, I didn't, said Izuku. Well, one for all can make the person's quirk stronger and can even upgrade it. So, at that moment, it would appear that your body turned into your positive and negative charges. And once you came in contact with the robot, you corrupted its electrical circuits and you processed yourself through the robot 
that's probably how it happened. Man, this is a lot to take in, said Denki. I know, said Izuku. But what I really want to know is, how did I get one for all? You did say that there can only be one, right? I did, said Toshinori. This is all new to me. Toshinori thinks for a second and, s and he comes up with a reason. Wait a second. Boys, was there a moment where you two shared electricity with each other? Izuku and Denki think for a second, and Izuku says, yeah, there was. When, said Denki, and Toshinori. When we were about to leave for the mock exams, me and Denki shook hands, and when we did it, I felt an odd jolt sensation go throughout my body. Sorry oh, to wait, interrupt, but I remember the that, real quick. Said Denki. You were acting all hyper and really active and jittery. Yeah, at first I thought it was just about the exams and I and I was nervous. But it turns out you gave me one for all energy. That's how I got it. Toshinori got in the conversation saying, and it must have fused with your positive and negative charges. And it's constantly feeding on it. It all makes sense now. Toshinori laughs from excitement and says, This is amazing! Two people with one for all. That means since you didn't swallow his DNA, it doesn't count as him giving you one for all. That's how he still has it. This is nuts, said Izuku. This is truly nuts. Denki then said, Oh wait, well, what about Izuku? He, he deserves to go to UA. Toshinori says, I'm sorry, Elder Kaminari, but I've tried everything I could. They think your brother is just too destructive. Well then, I'm not going, said Denki. Izuku was taken off by his brother's response. What did you say? If they're not going to let you in, bro, then I'm not going. It's not fair. Izuku approaches Denki and places a hand on his shoulder and says, Bro, you still blame yourself, don't you? Ten seconds of silence goes by, and the only words that escaped Denki's mouth was, Well, I... Izuku sighed and says, Listen, bro. I said this before and I'll say it a thousand more times. It's not your fault. I broke the rules. I can't go to UA. And it's not because of you. Bro, listen. UA is the school where the most promising heroes go. You heard Toshinori. He's going to be teaching there. But he's always with us. He could just teach us anytime he wants, said Denki. All Might then got in the conversation, saying, Well, actually, I'll be working at UA most of the times where I'll be teaching. So my time with you boys won't be very long. Izuku speaks. Denki, I need you to go. I need you to go. A tear falls down Denki's face, and he tightly hugs Izuku, and Izuku hugs him back. Denki speaks. It's gonna feel empty without you there with me, bro. Izuku speaks. I know it will, but we'll always have time to hang out. And who knows? Maybe when you make some friends there, we can all hang out together. Toshinori watches this, and he feels like he has a heavy heart and speaks. You know, it truly hurts me to see two brothers separating. I promise to the both of you, I will find a way to make this work. You have my word. Izuku then says, thanks, All Might. Yeah, 
Thanks, All Might, said Denki. All Might sighs and says, Okay, young Kaminari, so which school will you be choosing? Izuku thinks for a second and says, Well, last night I put a lot of thought into this, and I've decided that I will go to Shiketsu High. Toshinori then speaks. Very well. I'll be sure to inform them that you're interested and you should get an application in the mail soon. Great. Thanks again, All Might. It's no problem. And don't worry, young Kaminari. I'll be sure to have Gran Torino help you and train you on how to properly use one for all. Izuku smiles and looks to Denki who was standing in front of the ocean water with a rock in hand. Izuku approaches and says, You gonna be okay, bro? If I had to be honest, no, not really. I just can't imagine going anywhere without you, Izuku. Izuku speaks. I know it's hard, but All Might did say he was going to do everything he can to help me. So, for now, I need my education. I know, said Denki. Izuku then says, so, what's with the rock? Denki smiles and says, it's for this. Denki then charges up, one for all, and full cowling. Mainly focusing on his arm, he then chucks the rock into the water. It skips more like... I'm going to say 200 times. New world record. Wow, said Izuku. Impressive. But let me show you how it's really done. Izuku finds a rock and he throws it using one for all. It had to have skipped more than Denki's rock did. Toshinori then buffs up into All Might and says, Ha ha ha! That was very impressive, Kaminari brothers. But let me show you how a real pro does it. All Might then picks up a very big rock and chucks it with so much force and so much momentum that he splits the ocean water like Moses did to the Red Sea. Both the boys' mouths were open with bewilderment. Wow, that was so awesome, said Izuku. I can't believe we're going to be able to do something like that in the future, said Kaminari. Or, said Denki. All my laughs. Ha <laughs> ha! Believe it! Kaminari bros! <clears throat> All three of them start laughing as we slowly fade out to the ocean, with the sight of the beach getting smaller and smaller. We fade to black, and then reappear. It's been two weeks, and the boys have received their school uniforms, with Denki receiving his UA uniform, and Izuku receiving his Shiketsu uniform. Hey, Denki, look at this. I got a hat to go with my outfit. Izuku shows his hat. It had a big gold plate with the letter S on it. Oh man, that's so cool. I don't have one. Ah, oh, man. Izuku then said, don't fret on it. Come on, let's get dressed and show our parents. Yeah, let's go. Both the boys would get their uniforms on and show their parents. And as any other parents would do when they see their, their kids in a school uniform, they have to take pictures and show it to their friends. Mother speaks. Oh, so, are you boys ready for school? Both the boys nod their heads and walk out to the front door. And when they reach the end of the driveway, the boys turn to face each other. Izuku takes a deep breath and says, Well, this is it. Yeah said Denki. I still can't believe this is happening. They're separating us. It's really not going to be a day in school without you. Izuku speaks. 
I understand it. I understand it won't. But, hey, no matter where we are, one for all always keeps us together. Izuku raises his hand into the air, conjuring electricity with one for all added. Denki smiles and says, it sure does, as he does the same thing with his electricity. With their hands both in with their hands both up, the boys fists bump each other, and as they separate their fists, a bright yellow bubble forms between their fists and disappears when they make the exploding sound effects as they open their hands up. I'll see you when I get out of school, bro, said Denki. And I'll see you when I get off, said Izuku. Both the boys start walking their separate ways. We then split into a screen with well, Izuku on the I right go. side and Denki on the left side. Izuku takes the train to get to Shiketsu High, while Denki takes the city bus to get to UA. Soon, both the boys arrive at the main entrance of their schools, taking in the scenery of their surroundings. Both the boys then take a deep breath and says, Well, here I go. Both the boys then cross the line that divides the school from the pavement as the screen does a freeze frame shot pausing as the boys enter their school premises. And that is the end of What If Deku Was a Storm Wolf Part 3. Now, after listening back of Part 1 of Storm Wolf, I remember saying that another student said that they were inseparable, which in some ways they are. So, I decided to go in the opposite direction of that in Part 3. Yeah, it's hard for these brothers to be separated, but... I got something good planned for that in the future. You'll you'll see when it comes. You'll see. Um Nope. Got nothing else other than next part is, you know, gonna be part uh seven or eight of Snow Wolf. So like, yeah. Still a work in progress with that one, but it is almost finished. So with that out of the way. Thank you all for clicking the video. Hope you guys like, share, and subscribe. And if you made it to the end of this video, consider yourselves hashtag blessed. And I hope everyone has a nice day. Good.